Okay, welcome back to the Morning Detour. I have a special guest with us uh, this morning. We've all seen her work uh, throughout Montreal, everywhere, billboards, flyers, um, when you're in the bus station, in the metro, her work is there. It's, it's literally everywhere. But we do not know the woman behind the art, so I'm happy to get her here. She is a digital artist, a graphic designer, a creative consultant. Um, and again, like her work is in Montreal, of course. You can see it uh, around Canada as well. She's done some work in the U.S., um, as well as Senegal as well. So um, we'll see if she's done work somewhere else as well. She's <laughs> growing. But uh, yeah, welcome, Leona, to The Morning Detour. How are you this morning? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. So um, I just want to jump right in. So how did you start your creative journey? Uh, well, seems like forever. <laughs> I've I've always been fascinated by with art at a young age. I love my after school and Saturday morning cartoons. I was always fascinated by that. How did they do that? So yeah, so I, it's in the blood. It's in the blood. <laughs> and the creative journey began when I enrolled in a graphic design uh, program. I freelanced a bit for a few years and then decided to take the plunge and launch my layer art business in late 2014. I'll say more 2015, early 2015. And uh, layer art, we specialize in, <clears throat> sorry, brand uh, creation, identity, packaging, design, wall art, and merchandise products. Uh, Throughout the years, I've helped brands and businesses evolve. So from being the head creative designer at Audacio Femine, which brought about the Salon International de la Femme Noire. I've also done stuff for Fabien Collat Foundation, uh, which uh, she does um, create for the Montreal International Black Film Fest, the Toronto Black Film Festival, as well as itn 4 d Fondue Noir, Gala Dynastie, I've touched a bit on their project. Uh, we brand startups, churches, promoters, authors, just to name a few, <laughs> basically. So you're you're well-rounded working with different clients and stuff. And I do like that you said, like, it started from a child. So, because a lot of times we have these dreams as, as children or we're attracted to certain things as children, but then as we get older, it kind of fades away because we're, we're told like, okay, you need to be more serious and jump into the real world. So I'm glad that it stuck with you and you, you took that leap and you stayed with it because now you're doing amazing things. Your brand is <laughs> always growing. And every time I ask somebody like, okay, somebody needs a graphic designer, somebody needs business cards, no matter who I ask, your name pops up. Oh, wow. Thanks so much. <laughs> it always pops up. So you're doing such a great job and people love you as a person as well. You're professional. You're really like easy to work with. Like I've, I've only heard good things about you and I've never met you before today. Right. right. <laughs> only on social media. <laughs> exactly. But like your name is always being spoken in rooms that you're not in. So I think that's really great. And it's just a testament to your work and to who you are as a person as well. So I, I think that's it. Um, I also wanted to ask you, uh, what does it mean to be a social art artpreneur? Like what, what is that? Is that different from a graphic designer? Like what does that encompass? Um, personally, I don't believe it's the same in its totality. Uh, there are some things that are intertwined. Uh, you need one to produce the other, I believe, right? So artpreneur is the artist who realizes that in order to survive of, of their art, they're going to need to consider it uh, a business, right? So for example, in yesteryears, uh, there was the myth of the starving artist, you know, spending hours creating without any thought of what happened after the work is finished. Um, nowadays, with the advent of technology and social media uh, and all that stuff, um, the artists need to take off their, th that myth is no longer uh, relevant, right? So the artists need to take off their artist hat, you know, to, uh, and exchange it for several other hats. I believe, you know, like uh, the marketing, social media, collaborating and bookkeeping. So it's pretty much 
a lot of, well, hats that we have to wear. Um, and basically, entrepreneur for me are basically artists who are self-employed, make art, look, look for opportunities that are right for them, and create opportunities where there was none before. So that's what I believe what entrepreneur is. Well, I, that's what I am, <laughs> in a way, you know? So, yeah. Or that is what you do. Exactly. Correct. Like originally graphic design, nerd, but now because when you launch your business nowadays, everybody's an entrepreneur. So blending both together for sure. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, I think that's super, super dope. So I love that. Um, and then of course, as a black creator, is it important for you to let your identity shine and then also highlight uh, different black uh, organizations and, and businesses? And why is that? Yeah, definitely. Because what I see in the mirror is a black woman. And we all know that black people as a whole are not seen and being heard. I always say that black people create diversity is creativity. Thus, by highlighting and being part of other black brands also shines the spotlight on me. You know what I mean? So definitely. <laughs> I also believe the saying that no man is an island unto himself. Like my, you know, from back when, like I'm background is Jamaican. So my grandmother was always saying, saying that my mom. So it's like we express it's It expresses the idea that human beings do badly when isolated from others. So therefore we do need community in order to thrive. Right. So yeah, like definitely. Yeah. No, very much so. I completely agree with that. We definitely need to be more of a community and lift each other up where we can. Um, right. so doing that with your business and the people, like you could just see in your portfolio, the people that you um, have as clients and that you've built relationships with. And I feel mm -hmm. like both sides have benefited from each other working together and right. you know, have raised up and have done amazing things. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's super important. And just like you said, like we can't be isolated. We've kind of seen that with like COVID and quarantine and being, um, you know, social distancing too and seeing the effects that it's had on us. Um, but yeah, we do well when we, we work together. So I definitely, definitely yeah. And with, mm -hmm. um, your art, you know, like I said, you work with multiple brands and organizations and people and stuff like that. So how is it like working with clients? Um, like maybe you can give us like, because sometimes working with people can be difficult, like finding the right clients and stuff like that, or finding the right yeah. graphic designer. So how do you go about that? Uh, <laughs> the tricky question. Um, well, yeah, like working with a number of clients allows me to diversify what I do. Okay, number one. It also allows me to be more versatile in my designs. So overall, they have contributed um, to my professional development and skills, right? So because I believe the, the learning never stop. You know, you continue and continue. And also it's an improvement. Like you're always improving on what you used to do. Because when I look back on certain things I had done prior, it's like... Oh, wow. I did that. No, huh, that's crap, <laughs> you know, but as in any organization or businesses, there will always be particularities, right? Uh, all the time. Uh, some clients, most of them have good ideas of what they want, but they don't have the design expertise needed to determine what is realistic or for their budget. You know what I mean? And time frame. you know, time frame. Uh, it's like most of the time they think that, okay, because of what they see uh, that I've done, it's like automatically going to be transferred to them. And it's not always the case. You know what I mean? Some it's more complicated than others with, when it comes to certain projects. But yeah. And uh, while some allow the designer to be have free reign uh, to complete a job in the manner they see best, others want to micromanage. So that's part of it's part of the territory being a graphic designer as well. You know, it's a little bit frustrating at times, but in the end, all you want to do is meet your client's expectations. You know, for me anyways, well, I mean, for every business, for sure, I guess in the end, it's the client expectation. And there's always ups and downs, I'm not gonna lie, 
<laughs> you know. And I'm a lot of people see the what's out there that oh wow, you know what I mean? That's perfect. I want that, but everybody's different, so they have to understand that what I do for you is for you particularly. You know what I mean? And yeah, exactly. I I I, I totally agree because I feel like when you're doing something that's service based, um, right? It's a process to give that service, so. Like you said, people see your work and they're in awe, but they feel like it's going to happen in like 24 to 48 hours. And it's like, yeah. no, <laughs> like, there's, there's steps to this to get to the product that you want. Yeah. And I'm pretty hard on myself at times because it's always like it's always a challenge because you want to surpass yourself all the time. You know what I mean? For example, for Odessa Fumine, which I'm part of, like the first year we launched, you know, we we're testing the waters. The second year was like, wow, you know what I mean? It was big and superb. Now we're actually uh, starting the, the fourth edition uh, coming up soon. Um, so, yeah. And it's just like the we evolve and so forth you know what i mean so i it, it's it's a process in in anything that you do it's a process for sure but yeah no definitely and then you also said something like being hard on yourself like you may look at something you did years ago and be like oh that's yeah. but to us the people looking on the outside in we might think it is like amazing so it's so crazy just you know everybody's point of view like the artist their point of view and what they feel um, and then, you know, as the viewers or the, the, the audience or what have you looking at it, because um, I recently saw, I'm like a big Mariah Carey fan and <laughs> I was on Twitter and somebody was mentioning some performance she did and they were like, oh, this is my favorite performance. And she's like, mm, I don't really like that performance. <laughs> That's not my favorite one, but everyone are you crazy? Like this was amazing. The vocals were on point and everything, but to her, <laughs> something she probably just doesn't want to like think about, you know, right. she, she was at her top, you know, performance or what have you. But yeah, it's, it's funny how we, we view things. So Definitely. yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this question is a bit of a hard one because I think it's hard to just pick one. So what, is a project that you loved working on the most? Like, what was the best one? If you can pick one, or maybe two. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, my favorite thing to create, it, well, overall, like my favorite thing to create is exploring the endless possibilities of merging art, illustration, and photography. So to create pleasing and thought-provoking visual. So that's like always my aim. Um, there are times the creative process begin with a compelling image, um, uh, a theme of what I'm feeling or going through it in that moment, right? So I just want to make that clear for everybody, like my process. And like, for example, the latest theme that I uh, was, that I'm working on was uh, like my Bloom series, right? And since I'm a digital artist, I will explore different ways of bringing uh, for it messages and emotion through that particular piece. So what I will say that I, that I really, uh, like my favorite one to create was the, when we did the second edition of, uh, Audace, Le Salon International de la Femme Noire. And the theme was STEM on STEM. And I got a lot of love on that one. So, because it was different. Uh, I was original and different. So yeah, so that one I will say is one of my best. And the latest one was also the uh <laughs> the the 30th year for the Black History Month, the recent one that we just did. So that one was pretty cool. I was blown away by the response because I've been doing this for so long in that way, designing in that way, creating that way. But when uh, the love came out like I was just like oh okay the, thanks a lot <laughs> you know but yeah so for the the Black History Month as well yeah yeah no, that, that was, one was a big one because even I saw like on my timeline like people were posting it when you yeah. the the art was like revealed so a lot of right. people were in awe about it and they they really loved it so I do re remember seeing like a lot of like talk about the art and everything yes so, super super like, in, like, in, like that, that picture <laughs> exactly I was like like I said I was really thrown off a bit in a good way for sure 
yeah and my linkedin just my nobody goes on my linkedin page but i was just <laughs> you know so i was just like okay notification notification love love i'm like oh wow you know what i mean so i yeah it, it, i was blessed so, like it, it's amazing yeah no that has to be a beautiful feeling because you know you put so much into your art yeah. and hoping like okay are people gonna love it like what are people's reactions like you might not obviously pay attention to maybe all the comments because you're right them, but when you get so much feedback and you're you're notified of like what you're doing is is really like um impacting people and, and evoking an emotion it must be like just a beautiful feeling and rewarding definitely for sure yeah so um, I also want to know, uh, what is something that you want to let transpire through your Um, I guess individuality, uniqueness, uh, to evoke emotion through colors and storytelling. I tell a lot of stories in my art. Uh, a lot of people, like some people realize that, like, you know, because there's always, and I always mix it with poetry as well, right? I'm an undercover poet. Like I'm not out there like certain people will but i i do write behind the scenes you know but so but my art is sorry we have an exclusive you're also a poet <laughs> well nah, i wouldn't uh, yeah right here and there but i don't know <laughs> i don't know if i should really call myself a poet because i'm not on stage or anything i'm mostly behind the scene and it's through my art right so i express also through my art so that's uh uh, a way of communicating for me. So in the end, like I really like um, what I want to transpire also is like when you see something, you can say, yeah, that's a Leo art. You know what I mean? So that's pretty much, yeah. Okay. And I did want to ask you because you did, uh, you just mentioned uh, Odessa oh, Femini and I know that it's coming up in May. Is there Correct. a information that you can give us about that especially if maybe some of our audience is not too familiar with that if, you know you could just introduce that to them a little bit yeah so uh, that's what um it's basically what it is is to uh, shine the spotlight on uh, people that's in the community that uh, don't have the spotlight basically that's behind the scene all the time and uh, talk about different topics uh, that pertains to marginalized people, the black women mostly. And uh, yeah, so we have events, we have master classes and so forth. Obviously with the COVID, everything is, we had to pivot in a, in a way, but uh, overall we're still going, <laughs> we're still going strong. And uh, yeah, we have a great team you know, that keep moving forward. So yeah. And the, the fourth edition is uh, is going to be on the 28, 29, and 30. So it's on the three days. So, yeah, so we're starting. It's crunch time. <laughs> it's crunch so time. With I saw, um, I don't know where I saw it, but I saw some type of advertisement with the, the date. So I have it yeah. um, starting in May. I'll, I'll start promoting it in our community uh, events because I think it's important that people sign up and attend. Oh, thanks. It. So, yeah, I just wanted you to introduce it a little bit because I know, like, you know, you're connected with them, of course. It's right. Great, so it's better to hear it from, you know, <laughs> so Indeed. We'll be adding it in. So I will be talking about it. Um, and as more stuff is revealed, I'll add that in so that people can be updated on everything. Um, and then I also wanted to know, like, what are your aspirations in the long run? Um, let's see. Uh, to level up, always. You know, uh, you know, sometimes we're so stuck in what we know in that box because I'm always behind the scenes and you know what I mean? And we tend to like, OK, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> um, so level up for sure, <laughs> collaborate more with other creatives uh, that the passion for all things creative can be seen and heard in everything I do uh, to me surpass uh, the expectation of my clients. Um, you know, there's, there's times when I'm exhausted, <laughs> you know, and uh, sometimes the creative juice ain't flowing, but, uh, you know, it happens, uh, like just when you have a uh, writer block, you know what I mean? It's the same thing for creatives as well. Like, and that's the added pressure that I have on myself, you know what I mean? But it's a challenge. But like I said, I always want to try to surpass and meet the expectation. You know, sometimes I I hate it and sometimes I don't <laughs> have to be real, <laughs> you know, 
And like my slogan says, uh, good design is good business uh, to help companies look good, uh, both online and offline. Uh, nothing makes me happier than my client's success. Yeah. You know what I mean? And knowing that ooh, me, Leo Art, was part of someone's journey. So in the end, it's always that because we never know what tomorrow brings. And for me to just have that little piece of myself within what your within your project, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. And you could see that that everything that you just said, you see that in your work, you see that with the the feedback and the testimonials that people have given about you and your work. So definitely um, we see that your love for it is there. It's not something you just do because you found a way to, to make money. It's something that you truly mm -hmm. love and you take your time and you put out great work all the time. So I Thank think more hits than misses with your work. <laughs> um, let us know, like, where can we follow you? Where can we um, keep up with you and maybe like purchase any of your art when you have things on sale? Like how can we get mm -hmm. all of Right. Um, well, my Instagram is art underscore by underscore Leo Art. My Facebook page, uh, business page, Leo Art. Uh, my personal page, Leona Carthy. Website, still working on it. <laughs> still working on it. So uh, to purchase my stuff, uh, hit me a note, a direct message. Uh, yeah, it, it's easy to find me for sure. Okay, perfect. Well, definitely Montreal, follow her on her social media pages. And then also too, we'll keep up to date. So when you do do the site launch, I assume it's going to be on the site. So I can't wait to see it. Um, and all the other work that you come up with. And I'll definitely be talking about um, oh, that's in May, uh, starting next month. So next week on the show, I'll have that done. But I want to thank you so much, Leona, for coming on the Morning Detour and speaking with us so that we can get to know you a little bit. So I really appreciate it. And I'll thank some mil. Thanks some mil for having me, getting out of my comfort zone. <laughs> you, did, you did a great job. So I, I'm, I love it. I'm here to support. So anything that the Morning Detour can do to help you, just let us know. Just hit us up. All right. Thanks, Emil. Thank you so much. 